Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at units of time. Uh, we are in Unit 2, Lesson 7. I'm on pages 49 and 50 in our math journal, so let's take a look. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, well, Mr. Wassman, we've been studying a lot about multiplication. Why, right in the middle of this unit on uh, multiplication, are we talking about time? I know how to tell time. Well... If you look at these measurement scales at the top of page 49, you're going to notice that for every minute uh, in the day, that is the equivalent of 60 seconds. And for every hour of the day, that is the equivalent of 60 minutes. The number 60 is very important when it comes to uh, converting between units of time. So... What are we doing here when we convert from hours to minutes or minutes to seconds? Well, what we're doing is we're multiplying by 60. And how do we multiply by 60? Well, if I take a look at this first table on number 1, okay, if I'm converting from hours to minutes, I am basically multiplying by 60. Now, what is 60? 60 is 6 sets of 10. Um, the zero behind the six represents that place value. So if I just ignore the fact that I'm multiplying by 60, okay, and I just concentrate on the six, I know that one times six is going to give me six. So one times six tens is going to give me six tens, or six with a zero behind it. Okay, now that's important because whenever I multiply anything that ends in a zero, that zero goes along for the ride. So two times sixty is the same as two times six. Two times six equals twelve. Two times six tens gives me twelve tens, otherwise known as a hundred and twenty. And we just follow the pattern. Three times six is eighteen. Five times 6 is 30, 7 times 6 is 35, and again, with all of those numbers, I'm just adding a 0 behind it to change it from 18 to 18 tens, otherwise known as 180, 30 tens, or 300, or 35 tens, otherwise known as 350. So this exercise dealing with converting units of time is really about multiplying numbers that end in a 0, okay? Now, a couple problems here where you don't see the number you're multiplying by, okay? Like right here, number three, you have blank hours, but you know you have 600 minutes. So you have to ask yourself, what time 60 gives me 600? This is a reverse multiplication problem, otherwise known as division, okay? Well... When I multiply 1 times 60, that gives me 6 tens, or 60. Okay, or 1 times 6 with a 0 uh, gives me 6 with a 0. Uh, since I have two zeros here, 0, 0, uh, I must have multiplied 60 times something that also ended in a 0. That would be 10. 10 times 60 gives me 600. Or, another way of putting it is 1 with a 0 uh, times 6 with a 0 uh, gives me 6 with 1, 2 zeros behind it. Like so. Okay? Now, when I approach this problem 15 times 60, you might be thinking, well, I don't know how to multiply by 15s yet, Mr. Waston. But... I bet you do know how to multiply by 5 and multiply by 10. 5 times 60 is 300. 10 times uh, 60 is 600. So what you would do is you would add the two products together. 300 plus 600. And 300 plus 600 is, of course, 900. Okay? or basically 9 with two zeros behind it. 21 times 60, you would approach the same way. If you don't know how to multiply by 21 yet, you could probably figure out, first of all, what is 20 uh, hours going to give you, okay, in terms of minutes? Well, 
if I have 10 hours, that's 600. If I have another 10 hours, that's another 600. And then I have one more that gives me 60 more. Okay, so 600 plus 600 plus 60. Well, if I add those together, I get 1,260 minutes. Okay, or 1,260. So again, if you can multiply by 6, you can multiply by 60. Let's do one more on this table. 40 times 60. Well, really what I'm just doing here is multiplying 4 times 6. Well, 4 times 6 is 24. So 4 with 1, 0 times 6 with 1, 0 would then give me 24 with one, two zeros behind it, otherwise known as 2,400 or 2,400. So these tables should be pretty easy for you to fill in. Now let's take a look at some of the story problems uh, that they have us doing on page 50. There's actually one down at the bottom of page 49, uh, but let's look at uh, number 6 at the top of page 50. It takes Kanya eight minutes to walk to school, but it takes Tyrone 18 minutes. How many more seconds does it take Tyrone than Kanya? Okay? So there's a couple things going on with this problem. Number one, uh, first let's uh, talk about this ruckus strategy that's going to help us solve it. So we're going to reread the problem. We're going to underline the question, circle the important information, then come up with an action plan. So let's read again. It says it takes Kanya eight minutes to walk to school, but it takes Tyrone 18 minutes. Okay, how many more seconds does it take Tyrone than Kanya? Okay, so how many more? That's a subtraction problem. That's a key word uh, or key words that give away the uh, intention of the problem. They want you to subtract. They're asking you to subtract 18 minus 8. So, already we've read it twice. We've underlined the question, circled the important information. Kanye walked, or takes 8 minutes. Tyrone takes 18. I'm going to subtract 18 minus 8. It's a pretty straightforward problem. That's 10, 10 minutes. So, my answer is 10 minutes. Wait a second. How many more seconds? does it take? So now, here's where the whole uh, units of time conversion comes in. For some strange reason, they want to know the, the, the difference in time in seconds. So I need to take my 10 minutes, and then I have to multiply it uh, times 60, or the number of seconds per minute. Okay, so you actually had two parts to your action plan, subtracting the, the difference in minutes and then converting the minutes to seconds. Well, converting minutes to seconds is pretty easy for this one. I'm just multiplying 10 times 60. Okay, so if I just ignore the zeros for a minute, I'm basically multiplying 1 times 6, which is, of course, 6, and then I'm going to add the two zeros in. So how many seconds do, is the difference? Well, that would be 600 seconds, or 6 with one, two zeros behind it. So here's a zero, and here's a zero. And that's what multiplying with a number that ends in a zero or in, that are in the tens does. You're just counting zeros at, behind the digits and making sure those get included. Okay. So go ahead and try some of these other story problems. Complete the rest of the tables. Uh, if you have questions, of course, reach out to your math teacher. Um, otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks.